In the news today, the Northlander has gone for its last ride, Canador College is making it easier for students to connect, and the North Bay Trappers had a wild one on their hands. Good afternoon, I'm Mitch Dietrich with Canador Newsnet. Our top story? Residents of Northern Ontario are now... Oh, shit, can I start over that? Or? Okay. Residents of no Northern Ontario are now without their iconic and beloved Northlander train. The loss leaves them searching for a ride south and reeling after losing a piece of history. Kyle Mywart reports, local residents and politicians are unhappy about the government sale of the railway. Last Friday marked a dark day for Northern Ontario residents. The Ontario Northlander train made its final trip, marking the end of over a century of rail travel to the north. The announcement was made on March 23rd that the Northlander would be discontinued, and ever since, residents have been verbally protesting as well as displaying signs showing their opposition. As Conservative MP Jay Aspen says, it's a day that will not be taken lightly or soon forgotten. This is a day to get northern and northern and engaged in, in, uh, in, in not standing down and standing up for northern Ontario. Uh, we need uh, some bigger picture thinking here. This is not only Ontario Northland at stake, this is the economy of northern Ontario. Many other prominent political figures were on hand to show their displeasure with the government's decision to discontinue service. North Bay Mayor Al McDonald was impressed with the overwhelming support of local residents and says that this issue will arise again and be a pressing political topic. That We need to make this an election issue in the next provincial election and I can tell you as a city we're going to make sure that this is an election issue so that we can bring this service back. We can put this train back on its tracks once that election happens. With the last passenger train having pulled away, Northern Ontario residents will continue to protest in hopes of one day seeing their beloved train return. For Canador Newsnet, I'm Kyle Myward. Now we go into the field with Josh for the weather. Tell us if that sun has poked its nose out yet, Josh. Today, Mitch, we have some beautiful blue skies and sunshine, but we are expecting rain later in the day. We're currently sitting at 18 degrees Celsius. Let's check out the local forecast. Cloudy with showers, a low of 13 degrees Celsius. Tomorrow it's going to be cloudy with a high of 16 degrees. We have some 20 kilometer winds coming in and 80% chance of precipitation. Back to you on the desk, Mitch. At Canador, Facebook and Twitter use has exploded. And now social media is being used in new ways. Andrew Hawkridge reports on how Canador is connecting to its students with the help of the internet. Everywhere you look, social media is in the palm of your hands. The technology age has introduced us to sites such as Facebook and Twitter. College students here at Canador are using it for multiple uses too. I'm in criminal justice, so I use it to keep in contact with the criminal justice office and students in the office as well. Throughout the years, social media has come to play a vital role in our lives and now the college is focusing mainly on social media to connect with students. Vice President of Student Services Sean Chorney says how much of an impact social media has on the college. We've really grown the way that we interact with students. We use uh, social media in terms of Facebook, YouTube, uh, we're starting to use Twitter for faculty to connect with students and blogs. So it's really I think opened up some new communication channels we didn't have before. Chorney says more students are using social media to connect with the college even before they arrive for the first day of classes. Pre-health science student Ali Sashua believes the social media age has made a definite change to her life. Connections are being made now through texting or Facebook a lot and um, I feel it's very important to still keep that personal interaction. Since the college has started using social media, Chorney assumes they won't get rid of physical mail delivery just yet. So we have cut back a little bit. We do recognize other people do like to have something in their hands still, um, parents especially, and some of our, our different demographics here. So we're going to kind of maintain the balance and use both for the, the most appropriate means. Over the years, the college has made it easier for students to connect with professors, programs, and special events the college issues. And one thing is for sure, social media is here to stay. For Canada Newsnet, I'm Andrew Hawkridge. Many citizens of North Bay are pleased with the City Council's vote approving a possible casino. Mike Ball reports on the pros and cons of what a casino would mean to the community. With a 10 to 1 vote in favor of a casino in North Bay, 
the city can start to look at possible areas where it could prosper. Council voted Monday night in favor of 300 slot machines. Currently, there are no plans to include betting tables or any other type of entertainment, but there are hopes to add entertainment features. Council member Dave Mandacini explains the possibilities with the Capital Center for entertainment purposes. So from an economic standpoint, certainly uh, you know, those are dollars that uh, the, the employees will be able to spend in the community. So it, from an economic standpoint, it's good for the community. Um, and it, it does allow us, we are a tourism town. I mean, we do have a lot of tourists coming through, th through the city and, and staying here. Um, and it allows the tourists uh, kind of another option sort of thing to, um, to, to have uh, uh, things to do here. The casino is expected to create 75 to 125 jobs in the area, averaging about $40,000 a year. 5% of the money generated will go towards the city for other projects that would otherwise require money from the city budget. North Bay is one of the five cities in Ontario that have talks of the casino entering its community. One of the main hopes is that it will attract tourists from cities and generate more money within our community. Smaller businesses, such as stores that sell scratch tickets, are worried about losing thousands of dollars to the casino. But other businesses, such as cash checking places, will see an increase in business. Council members are hoping that this is what North Bay needs to shine brighter than any other city. Mike Ball, Canada Newsnet. Twelve frosh teams consisting of Canada and Nipissing students took to the streets of North Bay in a race against time. The mini Amazing Race forces teams to perform tasks in order to receive clues and progress to their next location. Greg Samus joins in on the fun to see what the event is all about. On your marks, get set, go. That's what the frosh leaders of the Amazing Race heard as they raced from their bus to collect their first clue. Each team would get sent to a different destination that they would race to by bus and complete a challenge. John Perry explains what event takes place at No Frills. This is right now is a roadblock and we give them a decision between sweet and sour. So if they pick sweet, they have to eat a radish and an onion. And if they pick sour, they have to eat a lime and a hot pepper. And nobody's allowed to leave or get back on the bus until they've eaten both things and we're satisfied. Once completed the challenge, they would receive a new clue which sends them to a new location. Each team would have to stop at every location and then rally back at the school. First team back becomes the Amazing Race champions. Other destinations they had to go were Duchesne Falls, Capital Center, Aviation Campus, Rebuild Resources, Galaxy Cinema, Burger World, The Bay Truck Stop, Laurentian Ski Hill, Cheap Skates, O&R Bus Station, and The Health Unit. Janelle Martin says how proud she is of her team. I've done this for three years now and every year it keeps getting a little bit better, but I did really well with my team last year, so I was a little nervous coming into this. And this team just keeps blowing every day out of the water and getting better and better and better. This team is amazing. I love it. Congratulations to Team Luther for winning the Amazing Race, Frosh, and collecting 12 points for their team. For Canada Newsnet, I'm Greg Samus. Over the summer, Nipissing University employees have been hard at work. They've got an idea that will revolutionize their business program. It involves students receiving iPads to help them before, or to be more productive in the classroom. Canada Newsnet reporter Anthony Kellner says students are excited by the plan. With the new school year, school additions, and Nipissing University isn't any different. Nipissing gets its first taste of electronic productivity with the recent adaption of Apple iPads being used in the classroom. The business program recently brought in the iPad project, which allows all first-year students to receive a free iPad from the school in order to do their work and tests. First-year business student Cole Davidson is an advocate for the new initiative. Aside from the obvious school factor of having an iPod, or iPad, sorry, it's pretty cool because I can I can collaborate with my classmates and my prof because we all have the exact same technology. I think in the long run it's a pretty good reputation boost for the program because I don't know of any other programs, any other business programs anyways that have iPads. So I think in the long run it will be mostly reputational benefits. The move from paper to tablet and computer has been an infamous decision from the very beginning. Many people think it will allow for more distractions, but others believe it will greatly enhance the productivity of students. There's definite environmental factors to be considered but I think it just speeds up the note-taking process in general. No matter where you stand on the issue of electronic productivity in the classroom, I'm sure we can all agree that getting a free iPad would be a great incentive to study. If you want to try out an iPad for yourself, visit www.apple.ca for more information. For Canada Newsnet, I'm Anthony Kellner. Coming up next, Josh Hurd takes a look at what we're going to have in store for weather this weekend over Thanksgiving. We might just have to bust out those umbrellas, unfortunately.
Find out after the break. Now it's time to take a look at the local weather forecast with Josh Hurd. It's looking a little overcast right now, but the sun has been making a few appearances through the clouds. Tell us all about it, Josh. What do we have to look forward to this weekend? Thanks a lot, Mitch. Um, let's go ahead and look at the Cross Canada forecast today. Um, in Vancouver, we're currently sitting at some sunny weather, 16 degrees Celsius. In Edmonton, we got a few clouds with some sunny breaks, 7 degrees Celsius. And in Regina, overcast and cloudy with 6 degrees. Uh, Toronto, mainly cloudy, probably could be smog, 18 degrees. St. John's, cloudy with showers, 14. Uh, Halifax, sunny, and sitting at a nice warm 21 degrees. Let's look at the northern Ontario maps. North Bay, sunny, a few clouds, 16. Uh, Timmins, sunny, 19 degrees. Um, Sud Sudbury, cloudy with showers. Sault Ste. Marie, sunny and clear, 20 degrees Celsius. Let's check out the current conditions in North Bay. A uh, few clouds, 17 degrees Celsius, southeast wind, coming in at 12 kilometers an hour. And tonight in North Bay, cloudy with some light rain, 13 degrees Celsius. Um, south wind coming at 10 kilometers an hour, and chances are it's going to be raining. Uh, North Bay extended forecast this week. Thursday, cloudy with showers, high of 16 with a low of 13, and 60% chance of rain. Friday, mainly cloudy. High of 13 with a low of 8, 40% chance of rain. And for Saturday, mainly cloudy with a high of 6, low of 3, with 40% chance of rain. Sunday, variable cloudiness, high of 6 with a low of 0. So we will be dipping into some low weather in the next week. So Monday through the next week, you might want to bundle up because it's going to be cold. Thanks. Back to you, Mitch. Josh? After the break, Greg Samus will be filling us in on what's been going on in the wonderful world of sports including our beloved North Bay Trappers. Tune in and see what happened there, because they had a wild one on their hands Friday night. <laughs> 